Every so often, the sports hangover touches on mature topics. Discretion is advised. Welcome to the Sports Hangover. We're back and better than ever, the 2014 relaunch. Mike, I am happy to be here. Are you? It's been a while, Jeremy, but uh, I'm glad to be back. It's a bigger, better show. I'm excited. And look at you. You, you look so professional. I got a little like uh, semi-set going on. You know what? I dressed up. I got a studio. I grew a beard all for you for the Sports Hangover 2014. I'm Jeremy Garrison. That's Michael Benatar. We're both on Twitter if you want to interact with us during the show, after the show, before the show. And I am just excited to jump in right now. Let's, let's make it happen, Mike. Happening right now. You know, you know what's happening right now? Jameis Winston is a national champion and a priest, apparently. Did you see his post-game interview after he beat Auburn? It sounds like Ray Lewis, the second coming of Ray Lewis. He was preaching a lot to God. He was thanking him a lot. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I mean, you remember Kirby? She knows. She says all the football players like this in the South are very religious, and they're really into thanking God, thanking him because he's the one that made them win the game. Mike, it wasn't God. It was Jameis himself that took care of business. I don't like it. I don't like what's going on with his uh, vocabulary. I don't like what's going on with his interviews. I like what he's doing on the field. I like that he's a national champion. It was a great game last night. Did you get a chance to watch it? Uh, it was an exciting game. I watched the whole thing. Just got a back from uh, ago. a couple. Yeah. Well, we're recording this on Tuesday, but yeah, right. a couple nights ago. Um, it was it was an exciting game. I watched the whole thing. Is I barely watch college football. Very close game. Halfway through the game, I'm like, I really wish I put money on Auburn to win the game. Because it's an 11-point spread. You could have won a lot of money right there. But they didn't win the game. I know, I know. They covered the spread, didn't win the game. They, they covered the spread. As far as college football championship games go, that's about as good as it gets. Happy for the Seminoles. My brother goes there, Mike, as you know. Oh, James, he does. You knew this. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you do that. I, I didn't James Winston, big fan of his on the field. I hope he tones it down a little bit with the um, off the field stuff, with the interviews. He got in a lot of trouble this year, supposedly the rape, the non-rape. My brother knows Jameis. He says he's a great guy. I wish he was tone it down a little bit and relax a little bit in the interviews. I, I like what he's doing. He's a young kid. He's right. in there right now. He's a quarterback. He's having fun. Let him, he just won a national title. Let him Let him have some fun. Also happening right now, Michael, the NFL playoffs are going into round two. Round, round two of the NFL two. playoffs. We've seen some winners. We've seen some losers. The highest rated weekend ever for wild card games was this past weekend. Can you believe that? Let me mention something. We didn't record last week. This is our first show of 2014. But on Twitter, if you're following us at, at TSH Podcast, Jeremy uh-huh. made some predictions, and they were not good predictions, Jeremy. You came out, came out of the gate. You are very confident. And all your picks did not come true. I was big on the Chiefs. They lost. Big on the Eagles. They lost. Big on the 49ers. They actually won. And then the early game, the Chargers pulled the upset. Didn't see that coming. So I was 1-3 and three opening weekend. That all changes this week. We're going to get to that in just a little bit, Mike. Let's go over the four games real quick. We have the Saints and the Seahawks on Saturday afternoon. That's yep. a rematch of an earlier game. The Saints were embarrassed in Seattle earlier this year. The Colts and the Patriots. That should be a good one. Andrew Luck, Tom Brady. We have the 49ers and the Panthers. In Carolina, I like Colin Kaepernick against Cam Newton. Then the Chargers and Broncos are going to play for the third time this year. What game stands out to you? Oh, of course, the Seahawks. I mean, the Seahawks game is the one to watch. I mean, also the Colts and Pats are an interesting game, too, because I don't know how the Colts are doing it. They were losing 28, uh, down 28 points and came back, won the game. So I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. I mean, hopefully Tom Brady can do this. Last year, come playoff time, we did a little draft of all the playoff teams, and we, we went, you pick, I pick, you pick, I pick, and then the winner of the Super Bowl, whoever had that, that team, got a jersey. And, of yeah. course, I won that hands down. I blew you out of the water, and you bought me a beautiful orange Ryan Tannehill jersey, I did. which I wear early and often. I know. Now, Mike, are you ready to pick? Now, we're a week, a week in, so we're going to have eight teams total instead of 12. Do you want to do it again? A little pick? I'm, I'm ready, Jeremy. I'm ready. I need the win this year. I need a new jersey, some new apparel. I'm excited. How are we going to decide who goes first? I was thinking a little rock, paper, scissors real quick. Live rock, paper, scissors. Can you go wrong with that? Okay, here we go. All right. Rock, Rock, paper, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Damn it. What do you got? I got paper. paper. All right. That worked out better than I thought it would. All right, you pick. I'm going to write down who you pick so I don't forget. I'm going first. I'm going to stick a little dagger in your heart right Uh-oh. now. I'm going to pick the Seattle Seahawks as my Super Bowl <sighs> champion, Russell Wilson. Hey, well, I'm going to go with the Panthers. 
Whoa. Yep. Out of the box, mate. Yep, your your move. Let's see what you got. My move, I'll take the other team in that 49ers-Panthers game. I'll go 49ers here. I'm All a right. Kaepernick guy. I really All am. Right, 49ers. Well, then I'm going to have to take uh, take the Saints. So we got the Saints. The, we got the NFC covered. Wow, that's a little early to take the Saints, but um, we'll go with that. Hey, somebody's got to win. I'm going to the AFC, and you may think I'm going to take Peyton Manning and the Broncos here. Okay. And you would be correct because I'm going to do that right now. Taking the Broncos. Uh, I mean, he doesn't play well in cold weather, but, hey, we'll see what happens. Jeremy, I'm going to go with uh, the underdogs and a team that I have a dollar on to win the Super Bowl. It is the Chargers. Wow. Congratulations. That dollar, how much can that win you? What were the odds on that? 40 to 1, so uh, 40 bucks, plus a brand-new jersey from you if they win. I can't go wrong with that, a Phillip Rivers jersey. I will go with the New England Patriots as my final All right. pick. You allowed me to have the Patriots and the Broncos. That is a you problem. All right, so you have Seahawks, 49ers, Broncos, Pats, and I have Panthers, Saints, Chargers, Colts. People, don't call 911 right now for me raping Mike. Do not, do not dial the phone right now. Don't do it. Jeremy. It's okay. It's going to be okay. There's going to be a lot of upsets. I, I didn't even want to <laughs> put money on the Seahawks this weekend because I feel like something bad is going to happen. None of the teams that we want to be there will be in the playoffs. Potentially, it could be what? Uh, Chargers, Panthers. It's very potential. The potential's out there. I don't see that happening. Now, we're going to talk to a writer from IntenseFootball.com coming up here in a few minutes. He covers all the National Football League. His focus is on the New Orleans Saints, Mike, so he can hopefully give you some hope and inspiration for the Saints winning the Super Bowl this year. But those are our picks. That's who we have advancing forward. What do you got for me, Mike? Let's go into a little sexy, slutty, skanky story of the week. Time to dig up the dirtiest stories around the sport world. Jeremy, Johnny Manziel, the other night in L.A., where I live, was, uh, was out at a bar hanging out. TMZ caught him walking around with Miss FSU. Now, I don't know if you've seen Miss FSU. I'm going to throw some images up here when we're talking about her. You don't oh, know, look at her. Wow. You don't, <laughs> you don't even want to see our face while we talk about her. But he's hanging out. He's living the life right now. I don't even think he's concerned about going back to college. I think – Going into the draft, I mean, there's no real definite word that he's going in. But at this point, he wants to live life. He wants to get paid. The money badger wants to get paid. I like that. The money badger. You named him that, didn't you, Mike? I, I did name him that. Trademark that. You make some money on some T-shirts. I think it's great for Johnny Manziel to get out and live his life. This is what he deserves to do. He's only young for so long. We talk about this all the time. He's going to the pros. He's going to be a big-time NFL quarterback. Let him do what he wants right now. I read an interview with Miss Florida State oh, coming yeah. out of the bar. She was on SportsIllustrated.com. She said yeah. that she hung out with Johnny at the club and after the club uh, at night with Johnny and her friend. You know what that means? You had the breaking news alert. <laughs> John, Johnny Manziel had a threesome in Los Angeles the night before the national championship Now, game. this girl, I don't know if you've seen her, but she is very top-heavy and I think even taller than Johnny. <laughs> I feel like this is a lot, it's a lot to handle for him. Well, that's why there's two of them. So there can be cushion for the pushing. There can be a lot going on here, and Johnny can lean back and let things happen to him. Did you – now, I don't know. Did you say you watched much of that college football game last night? I watched the entire thing, Jeremy. Did you watch it on ESPN or ESPN2 where they did a, a mega cast? They had a separate channel where they were bringing in stars and celebrities to talk really? about the game as it was happening. Johnny Manziel and Tim Tebow were holding down the fort for a good half hour. They were both expert analysts. I was really surprised wow. at how well they both did. I did not see that at all. I had no idea that was an option. Tons of options. This mega cast there was like six options on ESPN. I thought they did a great job mixing it up a little bit, Mike. All right, Jeremy, this is the new year. And last year, if you watched our show, we set down some predictions. Uh, I don't know what the predictions were. I didn't want to actually go back and uh, review them. But this year, they're written down. I have them on paper. Hopefully, we can keep track of these until next year. Well, why be held accountable if you don't have to be, right? Exactly. So we are going to do some predictions. I'll run down mine first. Then you can run down yours, and we'll, we'll discuss. These are predictions for the 2014 2014 year. sports year or just the year in general. I have... Let's the NHL Stanley Cup winner as the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Bruins. Same thing. Or I had to pick two. I couldn't. I couldn't not. You, all right, fine. I'll just go. I'll stick with the Lightning. They're a strong <laughs> team. If Stam if Stamkos can come back and play, I think they have a really good shot at winning. 
Uh, now, we know the girl that is hooking up with Stamco is past and present. Well, no, Do we know if she's weighing him down or what's going on with I her? don't know if she's actually hooking up currently with Stamco, but I know uh, Teddy, uh, Purcell, very big one out there. Hopefully yeah. we can get her on the show sometime. She, she always rejects our calls when we call her. She doesn't answer. She doesn't answer. Um, Super Bowl <laughs> champs, the Carolina Panthers are going to win the Super Bowl this year. Well, it's a good thing you just picked them in, their, in our draft because that that's was, a prediction. That was one of the reasons why I picked them. I had to stick to my guns here. Um, Johnny Manziel gets drafted and takes that team to the, NF, uh, to the playoffs. Wow, I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, wow. Tim Tebow comes back to the NFL. I don't know in what cat and how, but he's going to come back to the NFL. Stop the madness. And the Heat do not win another NBA championship. Mike, you're going very bold, and I really appreciate that. All right, I really well, like it. I can't speak to the hockey one. I'm going to have to skip to the next one. Okay. What was your number two prediction? Uh, Carolina Panthers winning the Super Bowl. The defense is Super Bowl worthy. It's all on Cam Newton's shoulders. If he can step up and lead him there, he's got to basically beat San Francisco and Seattle or New Orleans just to get there and play yep. the Broncos or Patriots. That's an incredibly tough road for him. That's a lot of pressure on this guy. Well, who do you have, Jeremy? I want to hear your prediction. See if you have anything close to mine. Mike, I like the Heat one, and I like the Johnny Manziel one. I believe in Johnny. Mine are a little bit different. I didn't pick any winners. I picked some general predictions for the year. You ready? Okay, let's hear them. My first one is that 2014 will be the year of the underdog in sports. The underdog. We saw in five BCS games, four of the underdogs won. Auburn could have easily won the fifth one. I think it set the tone for 2014. The Super Bowl, I think the underdog wins. Jeremy, I, I like this because right before, after we made our predictions, you said I picked all the underdogs. That's right. I, I got underdogs in the Super Bowl. You got them. But if it's like Seahawks, Broncos, then they're still yeah, an yeah, underdog. Yeah, yeah. Right? Someone's got to be. Somewhere. So throughout the sports landscape, I'm calling underdogs in 2014. Okay. My second one, it's much talked about, and people need to shut up about it. It's really overplayed. There will not be any snow at the Super Bowl. There oh, won't be. No snow? It's going to be sunny and 55. Now, They're getting all the snow right now. I, I mean, do you know what's happening? I mean, there's like a polar apocalypse. There's a polar vortex, sure. Some, something's going on right now. Sure. Basically, Antarctica is stretched down to the yeah, United yeah, yeah, States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. Uh, it's just it's too talked about. Relax. Let the game be played. Let it okay. be played in the sun or the, the evening clear sky. Number three, a lot of people are talking about Teddy Bridgewater going number one overall, the quarterback from Louisville. I don't see it. I'm saying right now he's not the number one overall pick in the draft. Maybe it's UCS, Blake Bortles, big fan of him. Maybe it's Johnny Manziel at number one, Texas, Texas. Uh, we'll see. It's not Teddy Bridgewater. Write that one down right now. Okay. And finally, this one is interesting. I think you're going to like this one. I predict in 2014 that ticket prices at sporting events mm-hmm. come down. Okay. The prices fall because enough is enough. Do we- the at-home experience is finally taking over the in-game experience. We saw all these NFL games last weekend almost got blacked out, Mike. Yep. People did not want to go sit outside and watch these games. You can watch on your huge TV with your own things. And I think pajamas. prices finally start to fall. So do you know? Do you want to give me a percentage they'll go down, or are you just saying in general they'll drop prices? I mean, it's hard. It won't be drastic, maybe 5%, 10%. But think about it, the last 20 years or so, every year, ticket prices go up, up, up. I think we finally have hit the crescendo. Okay. It starts to come back down. It's too. It's ridiculous. Me and you – can't afford on our sports hangover salaries to go to a professional sporting event. We can't do it. We can't do it, Jeremy. I can't afford to watch Red Zone on my big flat screen. Yeah, because it comes in the cable package. It's great. It's, it's really I like your predictions, Jeremy. Very, you're, you're broad, but you're laying it down a little bit. We'll see what comes true this year. We've got a long road ahead of us. This is only We're writing the- this down. We're tweeting these out at TSH Podcast. We're going to keep track of these, unlike last year. Yes. Last year's sports prediction show didn't go well for us. No, no, no. no not that well. We, we didn't predict that many good. <laughs> the predictions may have been good, but there was a lot of bullshit in that show. We're just lots saying. Lots and lots of bullshit. All right, let's get to our uh, interview. All right, it's time for our guest. He is Greg Barber from football.com and intensefootball.com. He's a two-man website. Greg, all over the place. All over the place. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. All right, so we're going we're gonna to play a little game called Guess That Tweet. Let's play. Uh, this is a game we made up over a year ago. Greatest name of all time. Guess that tweet. I'm going to read a tweet, and you're going to try to guess who said that tweet. So here it is. This is a very recent tweet. Okay. So if you're on Twitter, you might be able to recognize it. Here it is. Am I listening to English? 
That is the tweet. Um, Greg, since you are the guest, you can go first and try the guest. Sometimes I do multiple choice, but this time I just kind of wanted to put it out there. Lately, a lot of people have been on okay. Twitter, so I feel like this is a pretty popular one out there today. It's very broad. <laughs> it is very broad. Um, I'm thinking... Okay. Oh, man. Am I listening? I'm going to go with... Oh, man. I, why, why do I... I Give me a give me a sport. Is it a is it a, uh, I think it's a football player. I'm gonna say okay. Chad Johnson. Oh, that's okay. a good one. He, he's like the answer to fifty percent of our guests that tweets. Yeah, yeah. Put your sink on. Jeremy, who who do you have? All right, Mike. I am active on Twitter. I saw this earlier. It's AJ McCarron's mom tweeted that last night when Jameis yep. Winston was doing oh. the post game interview. She did, not, okay. she did not like his uh, his vocabulary. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> he's just—he's a really passionate man, and yeah. he speaks quickly. And he just wants the—he wants to get it across. He was fired up. Greg, let's start right there with Jameis Winston. You're involved in the in the NFL probably more than than college football. But what are your thoughts on Jameis Winston? What he did this year and what he did last night, especially. Well, I actually happen to watch a lot of college football. I because I always like seeing the players. You know what's coming into the you know to the pros. Yeah. Uh, Jameis, he did. I gotta give him uh, his props. He did a fantastic job in that game, especially late in the game. Because you got to think about it, he was pretty shaky. A, a lot of people, especially on Twitter, were talking about that he wasn't ready for the moment, and that he was, you know, and he was taking a little bit of a beating. Which, you know, I mean, it, he's going against a really good Auburn team. Uh, but and but for the most part, he came up in that last two minutes. And he drove down the field, and he and he played very well. He played like if he was in that uh, Tom Brady moment, or you know, he he brought that out of him. I think once FSU returned that uh, kickoff, that really gave everybody a yeah. boost of confidence because before that, nothing was oh, going yeah. on. There was no plays. Right. He wasn't doing anything. He was three and outs, kicking. I think that was a big turnaround for everybody. You're exactly right. He's been yeah, shaky yeah. In, in the beginning of games a lot of times, but the second half, man, he turns it on. Turn it on. Yeah, but that special teams play, I mean, in pretty much any football game, if you can get a special teams play like that, a punt return or a kickoff return, it flips that whole game. I mean, usually okay. 9 out of 10, that momentum switches drastically and it doesn't come back. You're right, and that fake punt we saw, too, is a big play in the game. Greg, you're all over the NFL. Mm -hmm. Is there any doubt that Jameis Winston is not the number one overall pick in 2015? It's hard to say. I mean, right now, today, yeah, pretty much anybody pick him uh, yeah. as a first round, as a first pick. But I mean, you know, next season he may get a little shaky. He may get hurt. If he gets hurt, that's that may drop his stock a little bit because that's going to worry scouts, depending, especially how bad if he if he gets yeah. hurt where he's out for the year or something and they don't know what what they got coming in. And then number two, you never know. Maybe might be another freshman or redshirt freshman that emerges. Or junior that might emerge now that takes over for Mariota or somebody else that's com that's coming back and that might actually overtake him. It's always that you know it's always that X factor, <laughs> you know, right. especially it's... in the draft. It, it just shifts so fast. So early in the show we talked about a little bit of uh, the playoff games this weekend. Uh, here at the Sports Hangover, we like gambling a little bit. A li we like gambling Legally. a little bit. Legal, legal gamble, yes. Just a, uh, loss, just a little bit. <laughs> so I I put together a parlay for the weekend, and I wanted to see okay. how, what you thought of it. So the first one is okay. I was gonna I was gonna take the Saints plus seven versus the Seahawks. Uh, then I was gonna take the Chargers plus ten against the Broncos, and then taking the Patriots at minus seven and a half against the Colts. What do you think? That's a pretty good parlay. Wow. That, yeah, I, I think so. I really do because I, I do think the Saints-Seattle game could be closer. I mean, yeah. the key there is just if, if New Orleans can run the ball like they did against Philadelphia, it's a closer yeah. game, and they may even pull it out and win. Yeah. You know, wow. uh, the San, now that San Diego-Denver game, <sighs> San Diego is not up. scared of Denver. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is sure. a toss-up. It's more of a toss-up than people think. And San Diego's and, uh, on a And then you're also looking at – Oh, yes, they are. I mean, they really are. They're playing very well. Uh, Mike McCoy is doing a really good job with them. And Rivers is actually playing back to that level that he was three, four years ago. It's like he I took think. all the mojo from uh, Eli Manning. 
I really like those two upsets, Mike. The Chargers, Saints, with those big point spreads, you're getting money on those. I like both big those point. games big time. Even if you want to go money line on those, I think there's a mm -hmm. decent chance both those teams can win. Greg, you write about the Saints for football.com, one of the biggest football sites out there on the internet. Why is this game in Seattle going to be any different than the last time they played up there and got blown out? Well, when you get beat like that, it could do one of two things. One, it can just it, it can it can uh, kind of just stick in your mind, and you just think you can't beat that team. Or number two, you just kind of learn from your mistakes. I think Saints in that last game, you know, they they tried to do too many things that were away from what they normally would do. I think I think what Sean Payton's trying to do now is just kind of put them in line of what they're normally doing. And then last year, I mean, last you know, in the past they used to do the uh, Popeyes chicken and the <laughs> Green Gatorade, and they're going back to those things. It worked against Philadelphia, and I believe you, Saints fans were buying up Popeye's chicken like crazy. <laughs> yes, uh, Saturday. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be getting my three pizza and uh, rice. What's better than Popeye's on game day, right? <laughs> um, all right, yeah, so also, but, I have a bonus. I also have a bonus bet for uh, for the weekend. Maybe not even the weekend. This is more an entertainment. Now, if you've watched any of uh, the Oscars are coming out, the nominations, if you want to bet on a, uh, a director to win it all, 35 to 1 for Spike Jones to win Best Director for her. Now, earlier in the week, a website that I occasionally, occasionally gamble on had a slight uh -huh. human error, and he was 356 to 1. To win, and I, I placed a few bets on that, and then they revoked my money. But now this still went back. Even out in theaters, right? <laughs> Wait, well, it's yeah, been it's out. out well, it's, out. it's it's been out in big markets. It's been out in like L.A. and New York right. for a little while. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, coming it's com out this week. It's coming out now. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's a it's an interesting movie. A little strange. <laughs> Very strange, <laughs> in my opinion. But Very strange. It's not strange to Mike. Mike's been dating yeah, you just gonna you fall in love with your computer, Greg. I'm sure you sit in front of your computer a lot and look. It's like you start talking to it. It's like what's wrong with you? Don't oh, you wish I, you could have a little response back? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it, well, it's funny because I was, you know, I mean, I, I was an online student as well, and then also I worked for a social media site where I was in front of my computer 15, 16 hours a day. So Gee. pretty much close. I totally understand what the guys are doing. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Jeremy, did you have another... So I, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, I, just have, I have an idea that I've been thinking about. All these coaches that have been fired, getting back to football here for a second, all these coaches on the college and NFL right. ranks, but especially the NFL, there's so many coaches being fired. We saw in Cleveland, Rob Chizinski was fired one year into his job there in Cleveland, which doesn't even make sense to me that the head coach would get one year to prove himself. No. They trade the team, start running back, and then they, they get rid of him. And I raised this question on our, our Twitter page at TSH Podcast. I got some interesting feedback. I said, why why is this a not for long league, as people say, the NFL not for long? Why is this happening so quickly? And in our social speak today, I have a response from Rachel Rach. I want to see if you guys agree with this. Rachel Rach 10 is her Twitter handle. She says, nobody stays at one job or with one company anymore for their entire career like they used to. That's just our culture and our society. So you can't be mad that it's the same way in the yeah. NFL, the same way in sports. I thought that was a great point. And that... That may answer the question. I want to see what you guys think yes. about. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, and yeah, I actually follow Rachel too. I think I saw that tweet when she made that, and it was, and it makes a lot of sense, and she's right. Uh, for the most part, I think too, you got a lot of uh, owners who, I mean, these guys have made billions of dollars. They bought these teams. They're a little ego driven, so you got to understand that they they respect it. You know, that if they're going to hire a coach or somebody to lead that team. They really want them to turn that team around and make that team a winner right away because that makes a sign for them that they look smart for hiring that guy. If you turn around and the guy is going 2-14 and 14 or something like that, it makes him look like a moron. You know, and that's, and, that's the, and that's what I look at it. So it's a little bit of an ego thing, almost like if, when you raise your own child. If your child is acting very good, it means a lot to you. If your child is acting really bad, you, it's a reflection on you at the same yeah. time as the kids ended up in jail every every two weeks you know, <laughs> and you're bailing them out. So it's, it's kind of the same thing to me. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the same thing, you know? It is. The NFL the NFL's you know, a business but, first. It right. just, everybody wants yes. to make money. And so, like, for us, the fans, we get connected yes. personally to, like, the players, the coaches, and yes. 
the GMs or owners, they don't they don't care. They're like, all right, we got to make some money. We got to make some changes and just fire whoever they want. And it's so much easier to share criticism now. Think yeah, about Twitter and social media. You see these these tweets flying oh, in. And, you know, owners see that. GMs see that. Coaches see it. Players see it. Everyone sees this stuff. It's just this huge vacuum that we live in now where everything is visible. Everyone's opinion is out there. And everything is so much more immediate. It's really a change for the times. Yeah, Definitely plus you is. have all the Jekyll and Hyde opinions because you get you get them. They love that player one minute. He makes that big catch. He drops a pass. He's a bomb, and he should be cut right now. Exactly. It's, it's so true. Funny. Twitter, it's it's a great thing and it's a bad thing in a lot of ways. It's it's a scary place between some NFL yes, teams if you're an NFL wide receiver. That's for sure. Yeah, but but I love it. It's it's fun. <laughs> Well, Greg, thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. Uh, if oh, you want to play, you. uh, you're from IntenseFootball.com, football, uh, football.com. Yes. Football. And do you want to plug anything out? What's your What's your Twitter handle so everybody can get a hold oh, of you? At IntenseGB. Okay. At IntenseGB, yeah, and just yeah, feel free to uh, follow me, and you know, definitely we'll we we'll talk football or whatever. I'm, I'm I'm a you know I'm just that guy. All so, right. So uh, and thanks again. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Hey, it was thanks great. Thanks for getting here. You're awesome, man. All right, thanks. Thanks. Let's do one for the honeys. This is a new segment on the show. This is just the last story of the day that we want to kind of throw it out there. Um, recently, a story came out. A fan is pissed off at the NFL that he can't get Super Bowl tickets, so he decided to sue the NFL. I don't know. I didn't know this. you could actually do this, but every time you can get mad, you can now just sue anybody you want, it seems like. But what's he suing for? He, he can't afford tickets or too expensive? No, he can't. It, it, he's making it so hard. It's so hard to get a Super Bowl ticket. You can't just go to the Ticketmaster and be like, um, sure, I'd like uh, two Super Bowl tickets. They're not there. It's well, like they're so ha- in demand. There's only 70,000 of them. I know, but it, you have to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody to get one ticket, and it's $5,000, and you're going to sit in the polar vortex and watch the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> There's no snow at the Super Bowl this year. I predicted that. I also said the ticket prices are coming down, so maybe next year he'll be able to attend the Super Bowl, if not this year. It's not his place to complain here. He deserves no honey, Mike. Don't give him any honey. I'm not going to give him any honey, but I think, honestly, it is much better to sit on your sofa in your pajamas or underwear with two other friends, have a pile of fried chicken and some like macaroni salad. Popeyes, right? And some Popeyes and some maybe some beers. And you're, you're happy. You don't have to do anything. You got a bathroom that millions of people aren't pissing on all over the walls and floors. So you don't walk into a puddle of piss when you go in. So this is right in line with my prediction that the at-home experience is winning out over the, the game day experience. It's just it's easier, cheaper, better. Jeremy, when they made Red Zone, that was the end of the NFL, like going to the games. The beginning of the end right there. You can't beat it. Uh, Jeremy, this was a great kick off to the new year i'm happy First, to be back it's 2014 i have a sweater i have a beard things are changing around here and you better follow us on twitter at tsh podcast i'm blasting them out all right if we don't get molested arrested or abused we'll be back next thursday